So I'm, so I'm going, going to, to introduce, introduce our, our next stop, our first stop. Margarita Hendricks. Yes. 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 With, with administ administrator, administrator, oh, she hosts and administers the website, website on Carl Popper, our Carl Popper document. Margarita. Um, first of all, uh, thank you. This is for everyone. Uh, this is for uh, who organized this, uh, uh, this uh, conference. <laughs> And thank, thank you for inviting me. I'll just do my So, um, something, something happened to me that changed, that changed my understanding of a uh, uh, form. form. Like, like, did I experience, experience a stop 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 And now, the reason, the reason I speak to the form, 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 form is because, because I, 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 I truly need a lot of form. We are called Popper. When I read this book, uh, objective uh, knowledge, knowledge and evolutionary approach, approach. I have studied, studied a book about, about the importance of how we work this distinction. And, and so it was with the great pleasure uh, uh, that, that I found out that Carl Popper, Popper has, has in his personal, personal writing a copy of the last form, and I asked uh, uh, the, the director of the uh, uh, of the, the library there, there to check that the young lady read it. And, and so uh, uh, it is confirmed there are several, several annotations in it. So we um, uh, got, got it in 1976 uh, uh, from students from, students from the United, United States, States who had given to him as a present. And so now the big question is how much has that influence Carl Popper? And how much has he actually experienced a variety of stuff that we just did about, about what he did, did or did not uh, communicate? Uh, because it depends on uh, uh, how, how much you got or uh, 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 that was sent to me playing with the stuff we just So this is my own personal stuff we did or my aha is what? When I start grasping that there are actually three very different ways in which my family lost form. And so we all, I think, who are like actively engaged with this book, we all switch it among those three ways. And all of us were a little bit critical and thinking they haven't really figured out how to work on those three ways. So the way I understand the injunction draw is the injunction is in uh, uh, the first knowledge is uh, directed direct to us, us as humans that we can communicate with each other, but also, also given uh, uh, George Messenger's uh, background, uh, right now, uh, uh, it is an interaction with design and machine language because he, he got, got the ideas, ideas while he was uh, uh, designing the logical circuit, circuit, but in order to design a machine language, you first need to design actually an artificial language. And that's and basically uh, uh, developing a set of rules and injunctions <coughs> of things that you can do and, and things that are forbidden, and not and study, study the consequences of working with these rules. And so, so the stuff that I went through with it is I had a red color flags, flaws of form, and I actually agreed with some of the thinking. But the more, the more I started, I started thinking, thinking about it, and here we have uh, Thomas Kuhn, uh, who I also happen to have studied a bit, because Thomas Kuhn said if you see something absurd, you, you should not just dismiss it, you really have to think under which conditions does it make sense. And so, by, 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 by doing that exercise, I suddenly understood the, the, the perfect nature of the laws of form, that there is an absolute beauty, uh, uh, a partial simony, uh, uh, elegance, but, but in order, order to get it, we need to become familiar with that process of the soft switching, and that is what my presentation for me. And, and um, to uh, 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 so, so several people have given presentations, presentations uh, uh, Raman, Al-Jara, Al-Jara, Luka, 
a sahu a tím mašinou, a to slovo, a má to
He makes, he makes a very, very clear, clear a distinction, distinction between what he thinks, thinks what other, other people, people think, the people, people that are still alive, the people, people that are dead, dead whether, whether God has something to do with it, the fact that he's using symbols. So, uh, so he is, and, 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 and throughout, throughout the book, book he's also very clear, very clear that, that, that he's not just uh, playing with one distinction, but that he's playing with more distinctions. And so, if we don't really take a look, uh, and now, now I'm making a motion to do Florian's presentation, and there's someone else. He's, he's also, also making a distinction between self, self and other. So, so if you really want to understand, understand uh, George uh, Stenson Grammar, I don't, I don't think, think we can do it one triangle. We actually need four triangles. In which we, uh, each uh, each triangle stands stand for a particular, particular uh, discursive process. process. So, so, in one way, way it's just to draw the same and that and is a process, a process of, uh, uh, that happens, happens by making distinctions. But the author was, was speaking with me, he was talking, and, and he had a new road. road. And, and now, now, I, I, I want, want to, to put Graham here, because I don't want to be such a short idea. Spoke with George Graham, and I didn't find a picture of you. So, so I, I think, think that, that uh, sorry, sorry, that, that you will uh, 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 have uh, some conversation with George Lawrence and Brava. So, so I, I, I put me. And so, and so when we put them all, uh, uh, we put these four pairs together, uh, uh, we get what, what I call, I call this is a diamond, and then and this is a structure. Uh, uh, like that there shows, shows this is there are discursive processes, and then during these processes, we work with distinctions. And, and we do it when an attempt to understand each other's distinctions, distinctions or schema distinctions, or we are just not paying attention. attention. And, and so, so I can again, I am so this is the, 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 the hook or the, or the chicken chick in that watch. Uh, 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 this is just that this is actually the, 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 the meaning of the society in which uh, you and I'm assuming George will communicate. We are just not only thinking about it. That the chicken is crap. Uh, uh, and it can also be here, I'm just setting this up, up to highlight that, that uh, uh, you can, can think of that as distinction and also, also as a system of containers. And, 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 and here is kind, kind of a stylized, of a stylized uh, form uh, to uh, make me to go think about it. But, but now, now uh, I'm going to uh, uh, draw, draw switch a little bit the topic and say. The, the drawing of the distinction is something, is something you can, can see. see. You take, take a pen and, and, and draw a hook. But, but the, the agency, agency that, that is drawing the distinction, that, that is the human. human. And, and actually, the human, human you, you, you cannot, cannot see what's going, going on in his head. head. So, so we, we don't, don't know what the distinction is more than the distinction. And so, and so the there is this person, his name is Stephen Pepper, and he, in 1942, and I found out that the uh, 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 connection with Sorry, Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Stephen is a philosopher in arts and aesthetics. And for some strange reason, he decided to be the philosophy and try to put it together in a comprehensive framework. And his conclusion was. Does that work with, work with three, three or four, four metaphors on the on on which, which, which? And so, so that we can say that I can make, make a distinction that takes place on someone's head. head. We cannot can observe, observe it. It's an instance of an unobservable. But, but we can, can uh, make, uh, make it observable and discussable by drawing, drawing just by, by making it visible. But then uh, uh, we do an attempt to raise it. But we do it with the aid of a metaphor. And now, now the special thing, thing about, about the metaphor is, is that, that it's is never 100% true. The so metaphor is to say, say one thing, thing, to say, say something, something else. else. And then, uh, uh, people, people have been fascinated since Aristotle or Plato, Plato, Plato with why, why are we using, using metaphors and how is it possible that people understand that the person didn't get the stroke or didn't get the because they keep using a metaphor. So, um, okay. so, so the, the, the problem, problem of the metaphor, metaphor is that the technique is speaking is a lie, uh, uh, in a, in a conventional way. way. And, and so, so a metaphor is a ground in the limit. And so therefore, it's important to never use just one metaphor, but three metaphors. And so, and so what I'm 
Now, now we're going to talk about, about is the, the fact, fact that, that in the first, first two chapters, George Vincent Brown, Brown very, very clearly is clear using, using three metaphors, metaphors that can be traced back to Plato and, and Aristotle. Aristotle. So, so the, the first, first one is thinking is perfect confidence. Uh, so, so that's that actually a container. Uh, uh, more confidence than a container. And, and he is even more specific. specific. He said, just, just think, think of it as a circle. circle. And, a and a circle you, you can think of as a container that you can look at from the top. However, uh, so, so that is Aristotle, who is actually working with a container metaphor, if you look at this categorical logic. And now the circle in the sum, that is something innovative, I would say. Now, there is a historical literature on that circle, but I have to define the philosophy who say, that that's an important uh, manner of communicating. But now, now in chapter, chapter two, two, he introduces uh, the concept of, of the cleavage. And, and the cleavage that, that is actually Plato's butcher. butcher. And, and so, and so the, what, is what is very important now, that, that I found when I read George Spencer Brown, 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 Brown is that the switches, he doesn't, he doesn't stay, stay with the butcher metaphor. But they really, really start with the container, and then they say you can think of it as something that's isolated and separated. But it doesn't do what other ones do. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with this book, The Two Hands of God, that is Alan Watts, who is meditating on the butcher metaphor, and he just takes it totally for granted that in the beginning there was a hole, and then it was closed in half. And now the, the house, house got back, back together, together, or the house uh, started, uh, started uh, drifting apart. apart. But, but, but in every time I make a switch to, ah, maybe, maybe there's, there's another metaphor, and that is a container. And, and that is specifically what George is doing. It's kind of alerting us about the danger of just thinking, thinking uh, that, that we're all butchers cutting up the whole thing in smaller pieces. pieces. And now, and now I'm, I'm going to introduce you this idea of self-switching. Now, I think the reason we don't have the scholarship that is like violent and universal and across the five continents on the self-switching is precisely because it is unobservable. So it's something that takes place in someone's head. We can observe, we can see. And we, and we need metaphors. metaphors. And, and so, so we need to step up who, who, who actually gives us uh, uh, a set of metaphors for experiments. So he doesn't so say you need to use this metaphor. He said, just think about, about a metaphor, metaphor that's a problem. But so unfortunately, Pepe uh, publishes at the time of World War II, at uh, the United, United States, States joined Pearl Harbor. Harbor. So, so, so the book, I, I, I don't know how many people, people really pay serious attention to it because other things have happened. happened. But so, so it's, it's it's each chapter, chapter uh, uh, on contextualism actually can be understood as an argument in support of the dramaturgical metaphor. And so, so the dramaturgical metaphor can think, think of as a switching, as a switching in backdrops while we have the same phenomenon of form. form. So, so from, from a phenomenal, a uh, physical, materialist point, point of view, everything remains the same, same but, but something, something changes uh, in our mind, mind that, makes that makes us look at it in a different way. way. So, so it presents a different view of the human brain, brain or mind than the computational machine metaphor. It, it emphasizes something, something plastic, plastic that, that can only be studied with, with a machine, machine metaphor or with the opposite of the machine. So now so here I'm, I'm going to show uh, uh, what uh, happens uh, if you read George Benson Brown slowly and pay attention with his metaphor. We, we all know, know that, that he communicated with the line, line. so he so has some understanding, understanding of psychoanalysis. Now, now we can agree or even agree with him the got in touch with the correct school, but there is one that's called the object relationship branch, coming from E.S. Sutty, Ronald Ferrer, Wilder Fion, and in that way of thinking, you kind of can bring this dramatic metaphor life. So that, so that you, so you, so you or or really draw your distinction, distinction, and now you have to decide whether you think of it as a dividing line, line a separate universe, or a contained circle. circle. And, so and so the way that happens, happens uh, uh, it's, it's like, like we have a choice, choice if we train it like, like that, that and the molecular biologists cut the universe with small, small, small particles, particle. And now, and now we're actually, without realizing, we're using this background of cutting up 
uh, yeah, with smaller and smaller, smaller particles. So, so when we see the book, book then we then automatically think of the distinction of the separation. separation. And, and so, so we, we, we don't, don't really, really pay attention, attention that it is our backdrop or our, or our, our education, education that makes, that makes make the connection, connection with uh, separation. separation. But, but we can also, also now, now that I've read, read uh, George Mr. Brown, 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 you, you, you kind of think, think about, about the distinction in a different way. And then, then you can, can also, of course, course think of it from the angle of the circle. But, but, but so, so the important, important thing uh, about, about this switching, switching is, is that, that it, 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 the, 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 the switch is important. important. So, so it, it's, it's not the dogmatic that they, that they say you need to do this, this and, and, and if you don't do it, then I'm not talking to you. No, it's about like. We, we, we switch, switch among these different, different backdrops and the communication, communication of the uh, uh, negotiation, negotiation process, process where we try to understand, understand each other's backdrop uh, uh, in the point, point that we actually can continue the communication. communication. And, and so I think, I think the significance of George Washington Brown for the, for the 20th and 21st century is that they actually, actually discovered there's an, an error, error of omission in uh, logic of the library. And, and I'm, I'm going, going to just spend one slide here and I'm going to talk a bit about this. But, 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 but there, there is, is an a, a, whole, a, a paragraph, paragraph in the introduction where it kind of sets this art up that, that, that with, with Leibniz, Leibniz who, who was uh, kind of imagining that we are communicating with numbers, numbers, that there was like a like focus on content, content and, and that, that people actually stopped or paid less attention to form. And so that moving forward, in the, in the 20th century, there was like, like no common ground, ground to really, really talk about, about form. form. Now, now, of course, course uh, the, the aesthetic philosophers and, and, and arts and, and, and other people, people they were trying, trying to push the conversation about uh, uh, form, form, but, but, but the, the mainstream main philosophers, they were so focused on the analytical thinking of, of, of taking things, things apart that they, that they didn't adopt pay attention, attention to form. form. So, so now this is good. I can discuss it later with you, video. but now, now I want to tell, tell you about that I think the first thing is me, and that, that is also a little bit out of love, but I think that's also George Orson's brow, that is when he talks about the need to understand the nature of the world, and that is also a little bit out of love, but I think that's also George Orson's brow, that is when he talks about the need to understand the nature of the world, and that is also a little bit out of love, but I think that's also George Orson's brow, that is when he talks about the need to understand the nature of the world, and that is also a little bit out of love, but I think that's also George Orson's brow, that is when he talks about the need to understand the nature of the world, and that is also a little bit out of love, but I think that's also George Orson's brow, that is when he talks about the but it can be understood as an embodied experience, experience but also the but also birthing the process can be understood as a separation. And so, and so that, that in some, some primitive way, way uh, that, that we, we as human, human beings, beings carry, carry that experience, experience with us, and that, that it is really, really a matter of, of claiming uh, that, that experience and transcending it, it and, and that, that we don't, don't uh, get, get started with this idea of separation and cleavage, but that we we become more, more uh, flexible, flexible in our thinking. thinking. And now, and now uh, another uh, uh, first, first distinction, I think we need to go back, back like 40,000 40, years, 100,000 years, years, maybe, maybe a million years, years when, when uh, some, some animal that is our ancestor kind of made, made a scratch, scratch in the sun, and, and that the, the other, other animals looked, looked at it and said, oh, it's not special. Or, or they, they actually thought, oh, maybe, maybe that is a sign, sign signifying that the chicken will die, and that's, and that's all, all that is it. But, but that, that was the beginning of the abstract thinking, thinking a, a sign, sign signifying something, something else. else. And so, and so what we see here is, is just the, the sign, sign of the symbol, symbol for something, for something observable. observable. Uh, and that's and something we have to echo about. But, but we also, also the sign signifying something else is the unobservable. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, so, the so the observable is a descriptive function, so we all can point our finger at it, we can, can describe, describe it. it. But the, the unobservable, that's, that's more like, like a, a performative, performative function, function or, or something we use metaphors, because we, we cannot just point, point our finger with it. it. And so, and so once, once that unobservable was, was recognized as being possible to view, that there was a choice to think the gods are talking, talking to me, or the gods are talking, talking to me, me. I'm, I'm the representative of the gods, are uh, the gods, uh, so, that's so that's for the ones, the ones who do the, the sign in the, in the sun, sun, and then the ones who are looking at them, think like, like, okay, okay he, he has been privileged by the gods, this is, 
but, but there is also, also I, think, I think, at that, that very moment, moment uh, uh, some, some of these primitive beings that understood that they, that they were, were just creating a sign and, 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 and that they were not representing, representing anything, anything except, except themselves. themselves. And, and then they have a choice, choice and that was either that the technology of working, working with science, science that, that they, they use, use this to help, help one another and, and, and create uh, a, more a more pleasant, pleasant world, world, but at, but at the same, same time, time that they were also a total realize that they actually have power, power and, knowledge, and knowledge and that, and that they, they could, could use it. it. And, so and so that is, um, I think, I think where, where we are today, today uh, this is to be uh, uh, think, think about, about it and go back, back in time, time and talk about the city, 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 city is I, I think, think that the found these artists can be found, found in the world of Aristotle. The rhetoric is about uh, the use of metaphors, poetic is about how metaphors in the tragedies are used to create catharsis and manipulate feelings of people. And, and so this, so this con uh, uh, concludes my, my presentation. So what I want to leave you, you with, with. Uh, I, I hope, hope is that I gave, gave you a narrative or a story, story to kind, to kind of, of uh, tell, tell other people, people who why they need to pay attention, attention to George, George Vincent Brown, 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 that it, that it is, is not just, just about, about uh, this, uh, this, the, the, the laws the or, or the, the special, special logic, logic or, or, or the, the new computer language. Uh, but uh, that, that is also, also trying to tell us something about communication. Thank, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Let's open it up. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, at the Essendon Conference, Spencer Brown was asked about communication. Yeah. And he expressed a very interesting idea that communion was prior to communication. Um, I, in your imaginative reconstruction of the effect of the first sign, the first chicken scratch, or perhaps the first handprint on a wall, yeah. um, I wonder, do we see evidence? Is communion that which links me to my brother there? You use the brother, which is an interesting analogy. Yes, that... I think that was what I was trying to get at, but what I also... Okay, there were three points. Uh, yeah. The, the, let's say the, the, the most important point I want to make is that a written sign, if you look in evolutionary uh, books that go like deep history and etc., they don't talk at all about language. They immediately talk about the brain and how the brain further and further develops, but they don't really pay attention how that written sign played a very important role. And then number uh, now to go specifically, just that the written sign um, can be used to bring people together, but it also can be used to bring people apart. So uh, now to say specifically about communion, uh, here I go back to Ian Sutty on the origins of love and hate, uh, and also uh, Harry Stack Sullivan who is a, an American psychiatrist who say the relation is actually should be the unit of analysis and the relation is <coughs> com communion. So that humans come in existence out of a communion. They can't exist without relations, feeling a bundle of relations. And that is one of those unfortunate consequences of the butcher metaphor that we're all thinking of our, as particles instead of as relations. Thank you. Yeah. Um, th there's a couple questions back here, and then and there's um, some questions online as well. So, um, real quick, let's, let's get these. Yeah, thanks, Margarita, for that talk. And I, it has an amazing correspondence to Henry Gortos' paper okay. in 1970 on um, the ambiguity of one and two in the description of Young's experiment. Because, and he uses the terms coalescence and compressence. Compressence is the separation, and coalescence is the container. Yeah. And he even uses the line and the circle and shows that they, the container can hold the separation. Yeah. The separation can be outside. And the point he's trying to make in his paper is that if you take this multi-access way into um, reality, that you can go either through the cleavage or through the container, then um, the way you cross as the reader or, or the observer um, isn't um, part of the structure itself. It's something you have to do yeah. 
um, as the participant in reality in order to bring this about. So his point is that to create a description isn't simply a matter of explanation, but it's, it's a, a, a manner of describing this entry into the process, into the phenomenon. And that was the whole point of his article, uh, which you've just expressed really clearly. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I'm glad you say that because you allow me to bring up, I didn't use the term re-entry that we used a lot yesterday, but re-entry is like crossing the, the boundary and making, uh, 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 neutralizing the so-called separation I heard. And then I also want to make a plug again for the Aristotle's triangle of reference because that really helped me read literatures with words that seem totally alien, but by trying to map and translate, I think we can find common grounds. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. There's one online. Bernie. Yeah. Uh, Bernie, you can go ahead. Um. <laughs> oh, Margarita, thank you for your talk. I hope you can do me. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm actually from the Platonic Academy of Melbourne, so I kind of feel almost obliged to uh, respond to this Aristotelian view. Uh, where um, where Plato has been brought up and an absolutely marvelous um, synchronicity between uh, the methodology that he's trying to descri describe um, uh, when he uses that metaphor of the knife, um, which uh, with the laws of form, in my view, which I've written about um, uh, in a couple of uh, in a book and an article. But if I if I can just I think seeing you brought it up, I thought maybe I should just. Um, give a bit of an idea of, of how I see it. It's called, um, it's basically Plato's method of investigation, which he calls the method of collection and division. The Greek word is diuresis, which could also be translated as distinction. So what he basically says is the method of science that you need to do is you need to look at your experience and find likenesses in individuals and bring them together and collect them in a sensible way and in a way that makes sense and then make the divisions in the right place. Now, I, the way I explain this to people is like, for example, when you're doing uh, taxonomy um, in, in, in biological life or something, and you, you make the divisions between the species that make sense. And so he says, what you need to do is like a, um, like a, uh, a, 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 a carver, you need to find the joints underneath the surface. So you see all this difference and you need to make the distinctions in the right place. And for me, that makes a lot of sense. And the way he does it, the examples he uses in the sofas and everything can be expressed in um, exactly in, um, in the form in uh, using, um, uh, the, the notation of laws of form. So I'm just I'm just wondering if you have any any um, view on the method that Plato was using there when he was using that metaphor. So it, it is uh, very yeah I'll just look at you guys. Uh, very interesting you bring up diuresis because Karl Popper is writing also about diuresis and for those familiar with him he was he, he told the kind of this. He didn't pay attention to Aristotle at all, and he was kind of critical, but also sympathetic towards Plato. So that is where Stephen Pepper comes in, because I made the point of saying a metaphor, and I, I just uh, mentioned Plato to say that that is not a recent one, but actually an, an ancient one. And then I also mentioned <coughs> Alan Mats, who also meditates on it, but Stephen Pepper, uh, here is really important because as we say, we, we should not push it too much. Uh, we, we need to realize at some point it breaks down and we need to try, uh, an, and we need to work with another one. And, uh, but in order for us to do that productively, we, we really need to become aware of all the theories of metaphor that are around us. And I think we experienced that yesterday when Barry Smith was alerting us to the dangers of the machine metaphor, 
that Lou, I don't know whether Lou is on the call, but Lou immediately said, ah, oh, that is just a metaphor, don't you know that? But, but that's not what Barisnik was saying. Barisnik was saying that all these people that confuse the metaphors with reality, and, and we need to be, uh, we need to actually start educating ourselves about metaphors, and, and I think you kind of said the first step uh, by putting Plato in perspective. And also, there is a gentleman here that will give a talk tomorrow on mathematics. I don't know whether I see Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, he may say something about that also, I think. Okay, and um, we're really out of time, but I think um, you could you save your question, basically. Yeah, so I'm, I'll make it very brief. And, uh, I'm, I don't make it a, a question, I make it a comment. Uh, because I, I'm a fantastic talker. Uh, what I like especially is to do a kind of little journey into psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought this is very, very, very interesting and helpful to, to kind of think about the foundations of thinking and uh, the, the problem to, to think behind uh, the actual thinking. So he gave this uh, picture, I think, which really pointed out beautifully how the, uh, the thinking is connected to the physical, biological processes uh, it is happening in. But then, of course, and then thinking of Wilfred Bion in particular, I think he's making a point where uh, how, how can thinking be happening at all? And how, yeah. what kind of processes are necessary to kind of uh, give you the ability to make a decision. Yes. Okay, I think we'll meditate on that. Thank you very much.